Hey guys, this is Drew with the Kucha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're gonna be talking a little bit about what we've been adding to the personal collection. Uh, a lot of great things, and we're gonna be talking uh, about it with Treasure Town. So if you guys wanna see more videos like this, make sure to leave a like, uh, comment your thoughts about uh, this video, and subscribe. Uh, but let's get to that video. Hello everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and I'm super excited. I'm finally in person with Drew and Casey from Akusha Collectibles, and we're going to be talking about some Rattlers. Now, they're all CAC approved. I think there's some really exciting stories here. You know, we've got some incredible toned Morgans, but it's not just going to be Morgans. We have gold, we have some commemoratives, and just really exciting things to go through. So, you know, they're linked in the title. Definitely go check out their channel. Um, but today we're going to be running through some of their best in inventory i think you know you were saying first welcome but also that this stuff isn't really for sale at the moment yeah so we like to buy and sell coins but we really like to keep coins and so this is a lot from our personal collection cool well it's it's great to dive into collections and especially collections of dealers because i think that they often have uh, you know just different eyes i would often say i don't want to say better but i think you know they see more coins so they you know probably put away coins that are pretty crazy in their collection and maybe we'll start with this one you know this one jumped out a ton at me can you sort of run me through the story with this one so this is the 1888 morgan dollar um it's toned on both sides and the real value that comes to mind when you see this coin is that it's not only toned, but it's also housed in a PCGS Rattler. Uh, and the cool thing about this coin is that it was massively undergraded in our opinion, and also what CAC said, they basically said this one was undergraded as well. Uh, the story behind this coin is we saw some really bad photos of this coin on eBay, and something that you guys should you know, take up and understand is that you really should buy coins on eBay, even if you feel like they may not be the ones that you see in hand, you can always return them. And so we bought this for 130 and when we got it in hand, we were blown away. And we were offered uh, many multitudes of that, but really liked the coin and wanted to keep it. Cool. And, it, you know, it sounds like when you're buying off of eBay, a lot of these probably are not CAC approved. Um, is that something that you're doing, you know, on all of these? Or did you buy any with the approval? Or how did that work? Uh, I would say about one or two were uh, already approved. And the rest we sent in ourselves. So we actually made this coin and it's gold CAC. Nice. Awesome. Well, how, where would you estimate the value on something like this? I would say this one is anywhere between uh, probably twelve and 1500 to the right buyer. That's a phenomenal uh, return, and I think we'll be able to find some more you know, neat stories as we go along. I wanted to sort of shift focus, like I mentioned in the intro. You know, this one is obviously a, a barber quarter, um, you know, 1905, pleasing mint state 64, but uh, what's going on here? Why is this in your personal collection and not something you're just sort of trading? So the main attachment to this coin really is that it is CAC approved and the toning on the obverse, um, you know, it's not something that you would see on a Morgan or you would see on a Mercury dime, but you do see some kind of pleasant greens and oranges. And so when we saw this one being offered by David Lawrence on eBay, we thought it was good. I mean, it's a coin that's toned on both sides. It's a barber, um, it's in a rattler and CAC approved. Most of the time, you're not gonna have all those together. And so when we shared this on social media, people really did love it and that's what made us keep it. Sure. And, and what were you into this coin for? I think I paid $200 more than retail for this coin. So I uh, paid strong, but it's something that we really love and want to want to hold on to. Yeah. And as we move on to the next coin, you know, what when do you feel, you know, you can pay strong? Do you ever try to pay strong on different types of material to just test things out, test buying a certain type of coin out just to see how you do with it for the future? Or is it more careful than that? Yeah. So the biggest way dealers can grow and expand is that taking new risks on different coins. And um, just seeing how the market with Rattlers kind of increased over these past few months, it really got us excited to jump into the market and spend a little bit more and test it out. And so uh, that one definitely is a test, but it's just something, like I said, if you know the market and are close to it and you're a dealer, you just don't see stuff like that every day. And so it's worth jumping on. It's worth uh, paying a little bit extra for. Great. No, thanks for the perspective. A little coincidence here. You know, this is 10 times the face value in the year 1905. <laughs> but, um, you know, this one also AU55, super gorgeous looking gold CAC sticker on a Rattler. I just think it's a really nice eye appeal. You know, forget about the coin. Um, but now if we move on to the coin, um, you know, what was your perspective here? So the main reason why I like this coin to begin with is because I was trying to develop a two and a half gold, uh, d a gold lib set, basically. 
and I wanted to move it uh, you know, every single date that I could. And so when I bought this coin, I bought it because of the rich color that it had. Um, and a lot of gold has been dipped out or it's just uh, over the years have been faded in, in terms of its yellow or goldish look. This one's really strong in its eye appeal. And I bought this one for, uh, I think, about retail on, uh, on Instagram. And I thought it was nice. I thought it was a green sticker and it just fit right in the collection with the others. But it ended up getting a gold sticker. So I would say this coin is probably an AU58 to even maybe a mint state coin nowadays. That's what I was going to say. You know, there's market acceptability, a little bit of wear. Sometimes, you know, gets a low mint state grade. So um, I was going to ask where you thought. But, yeah, that's that's sort of the 58 to maybe 62 range was my guess. Um, and then we're going to go to maybe one of our more modern coins. I think there's two Ike dollars, um, you know, 1971D, mint state 65. You know, why is this next to a bunch of coins that are hundreds or 100 years old? So the thing that really drew me to the Ikes is that a lot of these were just housed in terrible places. Um, With them coming out in the 70s, people were putting these flips in PVC flips, which basically means that uh, PVC was used to make these certain plastic flips that these coins were housed in. And a lot of the coins either had that PVC residue or they had a lot of milk spot or kind of spotting to them. And so the reason why this coin is so special is not only that it's in a rattler, um, when, when Ikes weren't that popular during the Rattler series, but also the coin received a CAC sticker because of it being almost a, you know, a really nice coin for the grade and didn't have those issues that most Ikes do. Okay. No, that's fa- fascinating to think about. You know, I think there's all this analysis into mintages and, you know, but even just the, hey, there are a lot of PVC flips going on. I think that that could have a huge impact and that's not reflected really in anything that's observable for somebody who hasn't thought a lot about it. Exactly. I think our next coin, you know, also jumps out at me. I think there's a little comment, um, you know, having to do with the serial number, but also it's just a Mint State 60 coin. And I think, you know, it looks pretty nice. Um, And there's obviously different ways to grade gold, but I've heard that things were way tighter. You know, these are the first types of holders for anybody, uh, you know, watching. I'm pretty sure that that's correct. Um, Or, or, you know, some of the the first at PCGS. just in general. So obviously, you know, maybe things loosen up at the grading services, but very nice eye appeal, I would say, for anything <laughs> Mint State 60. Yeah, the, this coin really doesn't have that gold look to it as the previous one did. I don't know if Christian can reach that one and kind of compare the two, but you can see that really rich gold on the left, and this one's not as nice on the right. So the, the thing that you should understand about Mint State that are lower and uh, AU that are higher is that basically the AU coins... Um, sometimes just have a really nice circulated look and they were treated with care. Sometimes the MS60, MS61 or 2s were messed with. Sometimes they were wiped or dipped in something. And so uh, the cool thing about these is that we can start to get them maybe in a grading set. You got an AU55 there as you can see, an MS60. But also I bought that MS60 because of the serial number. This one's the 35th, 186th coin graded by PCGS. And so uh, those have actually been you know, going up in price over these past six months. And uh, I think I bought this one, which Christian's about to ask. I bought it for like <laughs> 750 bucks, okay. which was a lot of money um, because a lot of these were selling around 600 And, um, you know, with that serial number, I think that this one demands a little bit more of a value, probably around $1,000. Wow. Um, at what point would you stop buying purely for a neat serial number? Is it when that turns into a 109 or is it before then or maybe yeah, after? It's, it's 109 is mainly uh, the stopping point. Okay. Um, well, we still got some awesome coins left. I think we haven't done too much with some of the toned Morgan dollars, but man, I mean, this one, just a you know gorgeous rainbow, super strong rainbow over there, and then still color throughout the rest of it. Check out the back. Oh, wow. Also, uh, you know, neat pattern there. But, you know, can you give a little more insight? You know, is this another great eBay snipe, or how did you come into this one? So I came into this one because of just how beautiful the coin is, and a lot of the ways that me and Casey... Uh, pay ourselves is keeping nice coins. We don't go and buy um, things that are you know, outside of the business. And so we kind of keep coins that are nice like this. Uh, we paid a lot of money for this coin, but um, the way that we ran into it, it was Shane at Reliable Coins. He ended up paying $900 for, for the coin, and I think I ended up paying twelve fifty for it. But I just think that this coin is so beautiful, and it's toned on both sides. I just don't see this color every day on 79Ss. And so uh, it's something that is Casey's holding on to as his personal uh, coin, and I think it's just a really nice one. No crazy return, but a really beautiful coin. 
For sure. And also, you know, a good little thing there just for other viewers to consider, like, yeah, maybe there's certain coins and certain like date and mint mark where you see a lot of toning. Other times it's a little bit tougher. So um, just something to factor in in terms of, well, you know, understanding why is this coin priced the way it is uh, or why is it not priced higher? But uh, we're shifting gears here a little bit into some classic commemorative silver 1892 to 1954 uh, half dollars. This one's from California. Um, is it 1925? I forget. Yeah, it's the, a 25S, yeah. Yeah, 25 Jubilee. Um, so, you know, super cool piece of American history. I always think, like, what's being depicted there is, I assume, a gold rush out in, or they're saying diamond. Yeah, he, but Yeah, he's kind of, I think he's prospecting there for gold, if I'm if I'm being, if I'm just guessing. Right? Yeah, yeah, but great eye appeal on this one. And I feel like the, the light's sort of washing it out a little bit even too, but... Uh, you know, in back of it, another classic commemorative. Why, you know, is that something you're trying to build a set of too? Or? Yeah, I'm working on a set. Um, I wouldn't say I was inspired by Gary, but I'm, I do love the Cali Commem, and I do think that there's not very many out there in these Rattler holders. And so I found this one on eBay, um, and it, it, I paid a lot of money for it. So basically sometimes coins pop up on eBay, and you just have to message the seller right away with your business card. I ended up talking with a dealer and buying it for... I thought was a fair price. Um, the coin that I, the reason why I like it so much, like I said, it's in that rattler holder, is CAC approved, but also it's in really in its truest form. It's an original coin, has some kind of toning on it, and it hasn't been dipped or anything really has been messed with it. And I think that uh, really encapsulates the coin and makes it really nice. Yeah, and just understanding from a viewer's perspective, what does paying strong for it mean in this case? So a lot of these coins sell around 500 550 and uh, this, I bought this coin for around $750. But just to put it into perspective, I've never seen a California commemorative in 65 um, and CAC approved. Other mm -hmm. ones I've seen are around 64 grade to 62 grade. Yeah, and that probably speaks to also really nice premium PQ coins. You know, they, they can, it's not about the holder. Well, might be a little bit in this case, but also, uh, uh, you know, just about the coin speaking for itself. Pilgrim, I think it's a tercentenary, you know, 1620, that would make sense. Um, but is this a similar story where they're just tough to find for Rattlers or what's going on? Yeah, so I uh, I bought this one on eBay, paid a little bit up for it. And the reason being is just because I like the coin a lot and I wanted to start getting into commems because I do think the market's strong on them and they're all going to be going up for coins that are original, but also in the Rattler holder. And so this one's nothing too special, but um, the lesson that I would take away for most people is that if you see a beautiful coin um, with a nice piece of numismatic history like this holder, I think that it, it's it's willing to, it's worth paying strong for because there's going to be others that really like the coin. Definitely. Mm -hmm. After that, we're going to move on. We got four more coins. This one is the only one. You know, I'll give a little bit of a moment to just sort of look at what type of surfaces it is for some of the you know newer viewers or you know giving a mini test here and then I'll reveal it. This is a proof like designation on this coin. So I assume that that's a big reason in addition to the toning that you purchased it. And maybe, you know, was this again, the sort of thing for the personal collection, like Casey's got where he's paying, you know, low four figures, or was this a nice steal, um, like the, the latter or former? So the, what I would say is that most people, when they buy something for, uh, a certain amount of X, so say like this coin in 61 PL non-toned is, uh, sixty seventy dollars but someone if I like I did I paid four hundred dollars for this coin sometimes you think man I paid way too much at the time but understanding the market and where it is now um, sometimes your gut leads you to a good a good win and I think this coin really is um, has a lot of great things going for it apart from the gray but I do think the gray gives it that kind of interesting thing but um, paid around four hundred dollars for this coin and some people think you're crazy but some people think you're right on the money Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, and I've seen a lot of similar coins just with that sort of toning. You know, they're commanding tons, and I think, you know, it's a really, you know, great eye appeal, just like this one, um, though it's, I love the, you know, accent of a gold cack sticker to uh, complement it, and, you know, really vibrant rainbow toning. Mm, you know, which toning do you prefer between these two? I would say the left is more, uh, you know, it's more like a liquid and flashy, um, but there also is that really nice assortment of just, a full rainbow look to uh, you know a crescent kind of this coin. Yeah. Anything beyond that that you would want to comment on here? Yeah. So uh, I was I was talking to a dealer and sometimes it's just working with people and, and talking to them about what you like. But we paid about one hundred thirty dollars for this coin as well, or one hundred fifty. I'm, I'm not too certain. But we had this coin for around six to eight months before we submitted it to to CAC to see what happened with it. 
and we're very pleased to see that it was gold CAC. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, a coin of this caliber, I think, you know, paying $130 for it, I think, is a steal any day of the week. Totally, totally. No, that's uh, fun. We've got two more here. Again, about 90 or 87 years later, we got a 1972 S, you know, silver Ike dollar, mint state 67, really high grade for these. Uh, it's CAC approved. Is there any difference between this and, you know, outside of the grade in terms of why you bought them? Do you buy them together? Like, what's going on here? So I bought the 71D pretty cheap um, at a show for like $40. Mm-hmm. The 72S, um, I've, I've just seen that there's, like I said, there's very few that are CC approved in Rattlers. And this one, I wanted to get a part of a set. So the main goal for me would be to have a full Ike set that is CC approved um, in Rattlers. And so this one was a great addition. Paid, uh, you know, I think this coin, you know, full retail, I think is around thirty, forty dollars, and so we paid around, I think, two hundred and fifty dollars for this coin. Whoa. Okay. Well, yeah, huge premium, but again, it's it's a very specific. There's probably not gonna you're not gonna see too many of them, and you know, th- there's a undeniable appeal to seeing coins in the Rattler holder. And our last one here is gonna be um, also some really cool toning, a little bit. Um, you know, maybe less of a rainbow look, more of that, you know, fuchsia orange and purple blue, but, you know, still super, super nifty is probably the word that comes to mind. And is there anything else that I'm missing on it or a story behind it? Um, we bought this one from a dealer that uh, doesn't really, s- he sell out of the personal collection too often. And so when he offered this one on Instagram, we had to jump on it. The reason why we bought this one is because we don't really see this color too often on many coins in Rattlers. You see those rainbows that we've shown off before? seen some sunset kind of colors but nothing with that purple and orange like this one has awesome well thank you so much for um, letting us take a look at a lot of your you know i guess technically inventory but i more view this as a personal collection and i think you know hopefully we stay in touch and i'm sure these coins are featured on your channel which again everybody can go check out you know with that link in the title and description i'm sure i'll I'll put as well um you know we can see over time the evolution of these mini collections and maybe they'll come for sale someday or maybe they'll you know just be complete and you know full all all in rattlers so thanks so much um drew and, and thanks casey for being here even though you know didn't uh speak to you too much but i'm sure we'll be doing some more videos so we'll hear from everybody thank you for having us christian